In this video, we're going to talk about transforming linear functions. But before we can talk about transforming them, we need to talk about what a parent function is. In the easiest way to describe a parent function is that it is the simplest type of function you can have. So one parent function for linear functions would just be the function f in terms of x equals x. This is the linear parent function because it is the most simple or the simplest type of linear function you can have. Other parent functions could be f of x equals x squared. This would be considered a quadratic parent function because it is the simplest quadratic function you can have and so forth and so on. You can then have x cubed or x to the fourth. All of those by themselves would be parent functions. But we don't need to worry about any of those right now. The only one we, re we really care about is f of x equals x because that is the linear parent function and this video is all about transforming linear functions. So now that we have the idea of the parent function out of the way, let's start doing some transformations. So the first type of transformation we're going to discuss is called a translation, or you could call it a translation transformation. And all this means is that we are taking the parent function and we are shifting the graph up or down. That's all that's happening here in a translation. You are just shifting, or you could think of it as sliding, the graph up or down. Let's say we have the parent function f of x equals x. If I were to graph that, f of x equals x would look something like this. Okay, it is a diagonal line. Translating takes that diagonal line and moves it up or down. So let's see, can I grab this? Well, it won't let me grab it, but basically, let's create a new one here. I can grab this line. And translating, if this was exactly the same, would shift it up or down anywhere along the graph. Okay. So, oops. Let's say that we had the translated function g of x. We have to call it g of x or something different because it's no longer f of x when we change it. g of x equals x plus 2. What's happening in this translation is that any x is having 2 added to it. So here, if x is 0, well now 0 plus 2 gives me 2. And then when I'm at 1, well 1 plus 2 gives me 3 and so forth and so on. And I end up having a line parallel to the original function, but it is shifted up. And if I did a different function, let's say h of x equals x minus 4, well that means we're taking the original parent function and we are shifting it down 4 units. So instead of starting at 0, we're starting at negative 4 and we're moving our way up from there. Now I know these aren't perfect lines, but just pretend that they are all perfectly drawn. And that is a translation. All we did was we took the original function and we shifted it up or we shifted it down. That is a translation and that is the first type of transformation we're going to work with today. Another type of transformation is a rotation. Let's take a look at that. All right, so the second type of transformation we're going to talk about is a rotation transformation. And by this point, you hopefully know that the word rotation means that it is rotating or spinning around. But we're not going to have some sort of graph that just spins like the propeller on an old-time plane. In this case, a rotation means we're going to have our original parent function. Let me draw it for us again. All right, let's say that this is the parent function, f of x f of x equals x. When we rotate it, we're changing the angle that the line is on. 
So we could have something that goes up steeper or goes up quicker. Or we could have it be a little, oops, let's use a different color. We could have it be a little flatter. Here we rotated the original to the left counterclockwise. Here we rotated the original clockwise to the right. And the way we do a rotation, if this f of x equals x, if that's our parent function, the way we perform a rotation, let's call it g of x, is not by adding or subtracting to the x, but by multiplying the x by a number, such as 3, or a fraction that is smaller than 1, but bigger than 0, such as a half. And you can even have negatives, but we won't talk about negatives just yet. So, what we have here are two different types of rotations. 3x, when you're multiplying it by 3, that makes it steeper. It's going up faster, because whatever x was, now we're 3 times x. If here was x equaling 1, well, for the blue, this would be 3, because it's 3 times 1. Green is half of x. It's going up slower. So if I was 1 here at a certain spot, well, now I'm only at half of that amount, because I went up half x. And that is a rotation linear function. All you're doing is multiplying the x by something, be it a whole number bigger than 1 or a fraction between 0 and 1. But I said we could have negatives. We could have a negative number in front of the x. And let's take a look at what happens there and what sort of transformation this is called. All right, so for our third and final type of transformation, we have a reflecting transformation or a reflection transformation. And all that happens here is that instead of having your parent function equal x, your function g of x equals a negative x. It is a negative in front of your x. And what happens here is if we take our parent function look, or graph that we've worked with so far, let's say that this is the parent function, the reflection makes it go the opposite way. It has a negative slope. That is a word you should be familiar with by this point, negative slopes, and they work their way down instead of up. Positive slopes, I always say, are like you're climbing up a mountain. Negative slopes are falling down the mountain because that is a negative thing to have happen. And that's really all there is with reflections. It's a negative in front of your variable, in front of your x. Now, you, with everything we've done so far, it has been very compartmentalized. We've had a translation all by itself. We've had a rotation all by itself. And now we've had a reflection all by itself. But a lot of the times, you're going to have combinations. You could have all three types of transformations in one function. So what we're going to do now is take a look at some functions and figure out what type of transformations are being applied to it. So we're going to start off easy with our parent function f of x equals x, and then our new function g of x equaling x plus 1 half. Pause the video and ask yourself what type of transformation is happening here. All right, hopefully you notice that all that is happening is that we are adding to the x, so this would be considered a translation. Because we are adding to the x, it is a translation, and we are shifting the graph up one-half units. And that's it. That's all that's happening here. All right, let's try a different one. All right, now we have f of x equaling x. We have our parent function here again. But now g of x equals 2x minus 5. So pause the video and try to figure out what sort of transformations are happening here. 
All right, well, I have a 2 in front of the x, and it's using multiplication. So since we are multiplying the x by something, we're starting off with a rotation by a factor of 2 to the left. And if you didn't have all that information, that's okay. If you identify that it's a rotation, that's good. But remember, if it's a whole number, that's taking it and moving it this way, counterclockwise. So that's to the left. And then we also have a minus 5 at the end. This minus 5 tells us we have a translation. And we are shifting down five units. All right, very good. Now let's try one last one, see what we can come up with, and if you can identify the transformations in this final one, you hopefully have a pretty good grasp on linear transformations. So let's take a look at the final example. All right, so now we have f of x equaling x. There's our parent function again. And this is going to be the second to last example because there's one more you need to see. But for right now, we've got our parent function, f of x equals x. And now our transformed function is g of x equals negative one-half x plus four. Once again, pause the video and see what you come up with. All right, the very first thing hopefully you notice is that there is a negative in front of our x variable. So this means we have a reflection. We have a reflection, so our graph is falling down diagonally like that. So that we have a negative slope. The one half in front of the x gives us a rotation. And we are still, even though it's negative, even though it's negative, we are going to have a rotation by a factor of one-half rotated to the left. Okay, so we're moving to make it a little bit flatter, even though it's going down. And then lastly, we have our translation with the plus four. So we're shifting up four units. Okay, very good. Now, as I said, there's going to be one more example. It's going to look a little bit different because we're going to mess around with the parent function. But a lot of the same principles that we've worked with have are going to apply. So let's take a look at this last example. All right, so for our final example here, our parent function is no longer the simple f of x equals x. The parent function is now f of x equals 2x minus 2. This is going to be our parent function. And our transformed function is g of x equals 4x minus 2. So we're trying to figure out what has changed from f of x to g of x. And by comparing the two functions, hopefully we see that, oh, both of them have a minus 2 at the end, but the x's are different. We have a 2x here, and we have a 4x there. So what do I have to do to 2 to make it 4? And hopefully you say that, oh, you multiply it by 2. So I could actually rewrite g of x as being 2 times 2x minus 2. I took the original function, and all I did is multiply the variable term by 2. So since I'm multiplying the variable term by something, what type of transformation do I have here? Did I mess with the ending part, meaning I'm going to have a translation changing up or down? Did I mess with the front with the x's, meaning I'm going to have a rotation? Or did I make it negative, meaning I'm going to have a reflection? Hopefully you say, I messed with the front, I messed with the x's, so this is a rotation. We are rotating 
the function to the left, counterclockwise. If this was the original function, just drawing a random picture here, if this was the original function, here is the new function. We have rotated it to the left ever so slightly. And we have made it steeper in the process. All right, that's it for transforming linear functions. Hope you found this video useful, and good luck with your future work.